Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Woodwork for Humans, the series where we make difficult woodworking tasks just a little bit more accessible. And, you know, we're all stuck at home right now. We've got the COVID-19 going on, and my family has been buying a few extra groceries. Nothing crazy, but enough stuff that it won't all fit in the cupboard. And we've got a few bags of groceries just sitting on the kitchen floor, getting in the way all the time. And the other day, my wife said to me, you know, you're always looking for projects for your YouTube channel. So, why don't you make us a little cupboard or cabinet that we can put these extra supplies in, something that we'll still be able to use once all this craziness is over. And I was like, that is a great idea, except for one thing. I'm bad at cabinetry. It's definitely my weakest woodworking skill, and I totally hate it. But I know a lot of you might be in the same boat. Maybe you've struggled with cabinet work, or maybe you've just never done any. Either way. Making difficult work more approachable is what I do here. It's my job. So now, I am going to teach you something that I am not good at. There's no way that's gonna be a huge waste of your time. You might be a little intimidated by tackling a cabinet project, but we're gonna give ourselves a few advantages. First, we're going to base the whole piece around a quarter sheet of half-inch plywood for the cabinet's back. This is cheap stuff from the big box store, but it's flat and it's stable, so we never need to worry about the back swelling in the summer. It's also reliably square and it's a good size. Two feet by four feet makes a nice cupboard, no cutting necessary. We're also going with this premium pine board. Premium my Aunt Fanny. This stuff is cheap for a reason, and we're going to be dealing with cup and twist, but it's also soft, so it's easy to cut and make joints in. If things don't line up perfectly during glue up, we can just kind of yank the parts into alignment. Try that with oak. Pine is a very common choice in early American furniture because it was cheap and its softness makes it efficient to work. Cutting my components to size is almost effortless. The milling on these boards is pretty poor, so the edges aren't parallel. I get the stock for my cabinet's end pieces into my leg vise and joint the edges together. This gives me a reference edge for shooting the ends of each board. This pine shoots really easily, but you have to keep your jointed edge against the fence. I'm working fast by not prepping every surface of my stock, but I need one good edge to create two square ends. Without those reference surfaces, nothing will work out. With my ends clamped together, I'm laying out the joints on both boards at the same time. This technique is fast and it reduces error. Remember that these ends are mirror images of one another. They're not exactly the same. All of my pieces are going to be rabbited to accept the plywood back. So I'll set one of my homemade gauges directly off the plywood and then run those gauge lines along the back of both the end boards. Keep your components stacked so your gauge won't hit the bench top as you strike your lines. I'm also going to use plywood to set the fence on my homemade rabbit plane. I just press the fence against the stock and tighten it down. Like a lot of things in woodwork, the best way to measure is don't measure. This soft pine is very easy to rabbit with my DIY plane, but don't just blast away with the tool. Go light at the start and stop frequently to check your progress. I have a depth line that I check every few strokes, and I make several adjustments to the plane as I work. Once the shoulder is established, you can take a heavy cut and make quick progress. The final joint is pretty good, but it needs a little squaring, so I flip my plane 90 degrees and work the side wall. A couple of passes like this makes the joint much more crisp. Now, I have to cut the cross grain joints, and going across the grain is a lot harder in this soft pine. So I'm going to experiment with some traditional work holding techniques that I've been reading about. I made some little waste blocks earlier. Now I'm going to nail these on either side of my piece and add a batten over the top. The batten gives your saw a fence to ride on and it holds the piece easily. I have other scraps tacked down against the other edges so the piece can't move at all. I guess this technique used to be very common and my Dazuki saw does glide smoothly against the fence. For what it costs, this saw is pretty great for this work. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Even with the shoulder cut, I don't want to go across the grain with my rabbit plane until I've chiseled out most of the waste. Use a big chisel here and move fast. This pine is effortless to split. When the joint is close, then I finish up with the rabbit plane. Now I'm going to cut the dados that are going to house my shelves. These are easy 
but there are several steps. I score the cut lines with my little Stockman knife, make a knife wall with my chisel, and saw down one wall of the joint. You might be tempted to saw both walls at once, but that's not the way to a tight joint. Instead, chisel down your first saw cut to make a trench. Tip a piece of shelf stock into the trench and score a line a little bit inside where the stock lands. You're aiming for a dado that's too narrow. That's intentional. Once you've sawn your second line, pop out most of the waste with your chisel and flatten the bottom with a router plane. Commercial router planes are great, but this homemade one works well too. No one is ever going to see the bottom of the dado, so don't worry about getting it smooth. The point is to get a consistent depth. Later on, we're going to get that tight fit on our shelves by taking a couple of very light shavings off the edge of the shelf, on the underside where no one will see. When I go to install the shelf, it fits the dados, but it's very tight. This is going to help make the whole piece solid and durable. Meanwhile, back at the beginning of the project, I need to make my second end piece. I didn't end up loving that batten trick, but here's another one. Screw a block of scrap close to the workpiece so that it's free to rotate. Tap in a hardwood wedge and the piece is held so tightly that I can get rid of the hold fast. It's like a poor man's tail vise. Now I've cut the piece from my top and I'm rabbiting it from my plywood back and rabbiting the end. I've rabbited the ends of my sides too. When I go to assemble my piece, those rabbits will fit together like puzzle pieces and give me a square joint with plenty of glue area. With the outside pieces all done, I tape them together and test fit the shelves. That shelf sticks up a bit. I need it to be flush with the rabbits so that the back will fit. I'll get both my shelves and scrub off the extra width. It doesn't take long in this soft pine. With both my shelves trimmed and installed, my plywood back drops right in, so I know my cabinet is square and all my components are the right size. Now, I'm trying to keep this video from being really long, so I'm not covering every single detail. The truth is that cutting and forming these joints takes a lot of trial and error, and nothing I did was perfect on the first shot. I would test a component, trim it a little, test it again, and repeat. It's not difficult, but it's not quick either. It's just what you have to do when you're building cabinetry by hand. I also have a second bench that I can use for assembly. You could assemble this piece on some sawhorses or even on the floor, especially just while you're testing components. Okay, on to the details. This cupboard is too wide to be strong the way it is, so I need to add center dividers. I've got the middle shelf on the bench, and I'm cutting a very shallow dado in the center on both faces. The dividers can be nailed in place from the top and bottom of the cabinet, but not the center, so I need some joinery there. The dividers are pretty easy to cut, shoot, and fit into the dados, but be sure the grain is running up and down, so the grain direction of all the pieces is going the same way. Pine is really strong under compression, and I expect someone to be able to sit on this thing without breaking it. Okay, gluing up a big cabinet project like this can be a nightmare. You need all your pieces to be exactly perfect. You have to work really quickly because the glue starts to dry as soon as you put it on your first joint, and you need like 15 really big, really expensive clamps. Now, I've got all this stuff left over from when I was a custom builder, but I know that a lot of my viewers don't, and we need a better solution for the Woodwork for Humans series. So here's what I've come up with. We're going to do this glue up with no clamps at all. And we're going to take all the rushing out of it by doing every joint individually. We'll put glue on the joint, put it together, and then tap in some really fine finishing nails. Those nails will hold the joint together while the glue dries, and we won't need any clamps. When the project is done, I plan on painting it anyway, so it's going to be no problem to just put a little bit of wood filler on top of those nails and then paint the thing. You'll never see them. But I'm also building this cabinet in an early American style, where nails would have been completely appropriate. So if you want to go with a natural finish, let those tiny little nail heads show. It'll look just fine. To start the glue up, I'm going to clean off my bench, which can also be the final assembly table. And I'm going to clamp a block of wood to the bench so that I have something to push against. So yes, I am using one clamp. Start on the floor. Brace the cabinet top against the leg of your bench and add one of your side pieces. Brace it against your foot and use your big square to check your angle. Then you can add glue and spread it around. You can use the awl on your Stockman knife to make pilot holes and drive in three or four nails. With the pieces braced against the bench and your foot, they aren't going anywhere and they'll stay square as you work. Then very gently lift up the other side. Get glue into the joint and nail this one too. Right now your joints are very fragile, 
So be careful as you lift the piece onto the bench. Get glue into your dados and install your middle shelf. It's going to be a tight fit, so you might need to persuade it down into place. Rex smash! The glue can make the wood swell quickly, and some of your joints might actually be too tight. If you need to, push the case up against that wood block and use a rubber mallet to tap the shelf into the dado before you add your nails. Another useful technique is to stand the whole thing up on end. The floor gives you a solid surface to tap against and makes it easy to drive your nails. After your shelves and dividers are in, you get to the real moment of truth. If you're lucky, your plywood back will drop right in. I've already got glue on the edges of all the shelves and in the rabbits, so I can use some short tacks through the back to hold it on while the glue dries. Finally, I add a little support under the lower shelf. This will transfer weight from the vertical dividers down to the floor. Now, I can just let this thing dry. Now, even a small cabinetry project is still kind of a big project. And so I'm gonna be doing this one in several stages over several videos. But each video is gonna be about a specific technique, a discrete part of the process. So even if you're not following along with this build, there's still gonna be something to learn from every video I do on this cupboard. And of course, when I'm all done, I'll have a great set of plans so you can build it yourself. And speaking of plans, you might have noticed throughout this build that I was using these homemade joinery planes, like my router plane and my rabbit plane. I made these for no money and they work great. You might want to make your own. So I've linked to the plans and the videos of these down in the description. And even better, I have a bundle of five joinery planes plus a free bonus project and you can get all of that for $10. It's one of the best selling sets of plans I ever put together and people seem really happy with it. You can get it at rexkruger.com slash store or click the link down in the description. And just like all of my videos, I wouldn't be sitting here at all if it weren't for my patrons on Patreon and my channel members who clicked that join button down below. The people who support this channel make all of this possible and I do my best to reward them with early access to videos, behind the scenes extras, exclusive videos, book reviews, free plans. They, they got these plans for free. It's really a good deal, especially for the low cost of becoming a supporter. So if you're interested in joining this amazing community of craftspeople, go on over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and check out the rewards I have for the folks who make this all possible. I'll be doing more on this cabinetry project in the weeks ahead and some more great content on saws. That's a tool I haven't covered enough and I know people want to learn more about restoring them, buying them, and sharpening them. So we're going to get all of that happening. I'll see you next week. Stay safe and thanks so much for watching.